Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, we began the series on Motivate, eight important biblical principles on how to influence your children, your loved ones, your disciples. Quick review, the eight secrets of influencing the heart for lasting impact. Number one, modeling. Open communication, time, intimacy, vision, affirmation, training, and trust. Have you ever wondered or wish that you can know the heart of your children, of your disciples, of your loved ones? What are they thinking? What are they hoping? What are their dreams? What are their fears? What are their concerns? How will you know the heart of your loved ones, especially your children? Today, there are many machines that can look at the heart physically. Example, you have the electrocardiogram, ultrasound, magnetic resonance, MRI. You have the chest x-ray, the PET scan, whatever it is, they can only see the physical heart. But the truth is this, you would wish that you will see or know the heart of your children. The Bible gives us insights on how to see and know the heart of your loved ones, your disciples, and your children. It is found in Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Luke 6, 45 tells us, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. In another translation, the mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. In other words, the mouth is the echo chamber of the heart. You want to know the heart? Listen to what the mouth is saying because there's a close connection. The principle of open communication is simply this. Open communication opens your child's heart. Open communication opens your disciple's heart. You can begin to see and understand. When I say open, what does it mean? Open communication. It's heart to heart communication. It is when each party, children, parents, disciples, disciples, can freely share their thoughts, ideas, without fear of being judged, condemned, or scolded. They are able to feel safe, to talk about any topic. They are able to feel safe, to share, to voice out their concerns, their opinions. Even if they disagree, they feel safe. From what? From anger, from negative reactions. Example of negative reaction. When you hear somebody speaking, be careful, don't say, what? How can you even think of such a thing? The moment you do that, they clam up. You have just stopped open communication or when you raise your voice, or when you get angry. The Bible gives us the principles. James chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. Let us read this together. This is so important. This you know, my beloved brethren, everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. We usually do the opposite. We are quick to speak, Quick to anger, the Bible says don't do that. Be quick to hear. This is a command, present imperative. Everyone must be. It's a continuous tense. You must always be what? Ready to hear. Quick to hear. Slow to speak. 
slow to anger. Why? The anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Many times we think by getting angry, we will accomplish the purpose of God. The Bible is very clear. The anger of man does not and will not accomplish the purpose of God. So what does it mean? To be quick to hear. Well, to be quick to hear means you must be intentional. When I say intentional, develop a habit of listening. Because many times we would rather lecture, we would rather speak than listen. I notice this is something I'm still learning and I need to learn. Every time we do 360 degree evaluation, meaning I ask my children to evaluate me, my wife, we do 360 degree, our pastors, they evaluate me, my staff, they evaluate me. We do this on a regular basis. Would you believe what they told me that I should improve on? Listen, listen more. You know, Many parents are very sincere, but they fail to understand. When you get angry, automatically you cut off the open communication. Because our children are watching us. They're looking at your facial expression. They're thinking, is this safe to open up? Many of you are familiar with this famous Philippine grass. I think they call this makahia. When you touch the grass, it will Climb up. This is the meaning. Be careful. When you react, your children will climb up. When you raise your voice, they will climb up. When you show negative reaction, they will climb up. So disciples, parents, be careful. Make sure you have open communication. Be slow to react. Proverbs 18 tells us, He who gives an answer before he hears, it is folly and shame. In other words, get the whole story before you jump to conclusion. People used to say, there is a generation gap. And my wife and I used to say, it is not really a generation gap. It is called a communication gap. You see, the key to open communication is listen, listen, listen. If you want to avoid generation gap, learn to listen, listen, listen. Notice something. Our children, when they're still younger, they love to ask questions. They love to speak to us. But as they grow older, what do you notice? They will spend a lot of time with their teenage friends. They will be on the cell phone. They will be on the iPad. They will be texting. They will be communicating. Can I tell you why? They realize their friends are open. They can share. They can communicate without being judged. The more you listen, the more you understand. And the more you understand, the more you can communicate. And the more you can communicate, the better is your influence. At the end of the day, it's about influencing the heart of our children. How can you influence the heart of our children if you do not know what's going on in their heart? Many times, open communication is blocked. Why? We're too busy. No time. We're distracted. When they're speaking to us, we're doing something else. We don't focus. We are quick to answer. We don't wait for them to finish. And worst of all, we react negatively. How do you learn to listen? May I suggest the five A's of listening. What are the five A's of listening? Be available, availability, attention, attitude. Next, ask questions. And lastly, all topics. The first one, be available when your children are speaking. Be careful. Do not ever give them busy signal. Don't ever let them feel you are too busy to talk to them. Let me give you an example. 
I have certain policies in my office that I will accept any call from any of my children so my children know they are prioritized. If I'm in my study room, they can come anytime. Why? Because they know I will drop everything just to listen to them. Never convey the idea that your ministry is more important, your work is more important, or your friends are more important. Beware of always being in a hurry. Beware of hurried discussion. Beware of quick answer. And when they're speaking, be quiet. Let them finish. Do not interrupt them. That's the meaning of be available. Ask questions. Draw them out. Next principle. It's called full attention. Give them full attention. Eye contact. Do not think of something else when they're speaking. You concentrate. No distraction. No cell phone. No iPad. No watching TV. And then only look at them during the commercial. Just focus on them. In our family, we have schedules. We love to talk when we are having dinner. No interruption. After dinner, we go out together to walk. Why? Because when we, when we are walking, we like to talk. We like to share ideas. So, how do you listen? What's the first one? Do you recall? Be available. Be attentive. And the right attitude. The attitude of love. You see, people don't realize. You will not be attentive. You will not be available if you are not really motivated by love. As somebody once said, the first duty of love is to listen. Listening is really love in action. If you love somebody, you will surely make time. When you are trying to court somebody, what do you notice? You are very attentive. You listen very well because there is love. You are so focused. You want to know what that other person is saying. Now, I remember my wife was challenging me about losing some weight. Now, I was not fat. I was big, 190 pounds. Would you believe it? Because I got the hint. I was listening. I was attentive. In one year's time, by the time we got married, I was 160, 165. It has been 40 plus years, and my weight is still the same. 160 to 165. You see, when there is love, you are interested to listen. Let me ask you, are you really interested to know the heart of your children? Are you really interested to know the heart of your disciples? Love them. Be willing to listen. How do you listen? Ask questions. Ask open-ended questions. Do not ask questions that is answerable by yes or no. Meaning, example, how do you feel? What's going on in your mind? Let them share. Don't be afraid to hear. I teach parents, if your children don't like to go to church, don't force them. Ask them, why do you not feel like going to church? Why are you not joining a small group? You ask questions. Find out the answer. And once they give you the answer, you paraphrase the answer. Make sure you understand. But don't appear shocked. Don't appear angry because you want to hear. You want them to continue. You see, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 20 verse 5, a plan in the heart of man is like deep water. A man of understanding draws it out. Notice the Bible says, what's in the heart is like deep water. But a man of understanding draws it out. So learn to ask questions. The most important thing in open communication is to hear what isn't being said. You watch the body language. 
you try to hear the tone of the voice and you try to see their eyes, their face, their expression. You want to know what's their feelings. I recall some time ago, I was discussing some issues with my grown-up child. And I was surprised. I saw tears. And I realized it is very important, it is imperative on my part to listen behind the words, to really listen to the heart. Why will a grown-up child be in tears? It must be something so important. Praise God. We were able to resolve it. Learn to understand the unspoken words that is coming from the heart. I want you to hear the testimony of my daughter, Dr. Candy McComb, and her husband, Dr. Jeff McComb, about open communication. Hey everybody, this is Jeff McComb and my lovely wife, Candy, and we wanted to talk about open communication with you guys and what it means to us in our family and uh, we'll let Candy start. Yeah, so I'm one of five, five kids and my parents and open communication was so key in our family growing up. You know, my parents created an environment where we could share and talk about anything and I mean anything like sexual issues, drinking, you know, sexual identity, the Christian faith, all these things. And it was because they really listened to us. They created environments where we could talk. We had family dinners almost every night as a family talking about big issues. And I always felt like my parents were there. If I ever needed anything, if my dad was in a meeting and I called, he would always answer. Or if I needed to talk to my mom, she would listen and focus and pay attention. And I remember growing up, um, my parents talking to us about, you know, even sexual issues, um, drinking, um, identity. One of the things I struggled with that I was really ashamed at one point to talk about was um, my fear of becoming a lesbian someday. And I played sports, I was in basketball, volleyball, and um, there were lesbians around me. And, you know, some would even hit on me. And I remember having this fear and feeling like, oh no, what if, if I become one someday? And I went to my mom with it and shared with her. And she told me something that surprised me. She said, Candy, I struggled with the same thing. And I realized that her sharing from her own life and her own experiences really broke down the barrier and made a difference and made me feel comfortable. And I told her, mom, if I didn't go to you with this, who would I go to? If I can't go to my parents with the deepest things in my heart, um, and I, you know, we can go to friends, but sometimes their advice is not going to be as good as our parents who love us and are, you know, walking with the Lord. So anyway, that was one of my issues and my mom helped walk me through it and realizing, you know, I don't need to be afraid of that. This is not God's design for me. God made me a woman and designed for me to be with a man. And I was always attracted to men. It wasn't that I wanted to be with a woman. It's just those fears. And I think Satan put those thoughts and doubts in my head and praise God. Um, look who I'm with now, the most handsome, wonderful man. I praise God for open communication and, and even doubts of Christianity and faith and wondering if um, this whole thing is even real. I thought it was at one point I thought that it was fake and that my parents were um, pretending and I was able to talk to my parents about this and because we had open communication there was no judgment or they didn't attack me and say well how can you be thinking this we're in ministry um, but my mom again shared with me that she had these same doubts growing up and we don't have to um, live in fear or even in shame of some of the things we're thinking and even you know with our own kids you know we we try and also share our own mistakes because when we do and we are humble, I feel like they're more receptive and they want to share more back. Um, one of the other things I wanted to share was before Jeff and I got together, I was dating another guy and I had always committed to only marry someone that my dad and my mom approved of. So um, I called my dad and I said, hey, there's this guy I want you to meet. And so my parents, because they cared and loved me very much, they flew to the States 
and they met this other guy and it wasn't long before they said, Candy, I don't think he's God's best for you. And because we had that open communication already and established that in my younger years, you know, I really believed them and I trusted them and I um, was able to receive them telling me to pretty much to break it up. And even though it was difficult, I listened. And by God's grace, I met Mr. Wonderful and um, I couldn't be happier in our marriage. And I, I just know that it's because of the open communication and also God's protection that he led me to Jeff. And we have four wonderful kids. And recently I was asking our kids because we knew that we were going through this Motivate series. And so I was thinking about these topics and I said, hey, Corbin and Levi and Joshi, do you think you can really share everything with mommy and daddy. And I was a little nervous, but by God's grace, they said yes. And that meant so much to me because it wasn't always like that. You know, um, maybe a couple years ago, even, I wasn't the best communicator. I mean, I would get angry and I still get angry, but I struggle with anger. And so, especially with Corbin, when he would hurt his siblings, I would tend to react and go into the room and and discipline him and without really listening and paying attention and looking at his heart like maybe it was an accident or maybe the other sibling did something and so Corbin told me one time he said mom I, I feel like you don't really listen I don't feel like you don't really understand me and um and you react too much so God used my own kids to help me learn how to also communicate better so I'm still a work in progress but uh, I praise God that they do feel like they can talk to us and hopefully we get better at that. Um, so anyway, that's my journey with open communication and um, it's been a blessing. I would say now that I'm an adult and you know, even with my parents, when they visit, they still ask us how can they improve and we ask them how we can improve. And one time my dad was visiting and um, I, he was in here in the States and I felt like he was being a little selfish and not helping. And because we had that open lines of communication, I was able to tell him, hey dad, I feel like sometimes you're selfish and you don't think about others. And it was hard for me to say that, but I knew that he would, he would be able to receive it because we've developed that relationship over the years. And by God's grace, he was humble and he's really tried to change. And I've seen a difference even from that conversation, you know, so. Dad, you're amazing. You still keep growing and improving, and I appreciate you and Mom very much. Love you. Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, this topic of open communication is still something that's newer to me, um, even though I'm now 40 years old. Um, it's something that I didn't grow up with in my, my family culture. It wasn't something that was uh, necessarily cultivated intentionally um, like it was for, for Candy and the Tanshi family. I still remember um, some of my early interactions with the family and um, I was just really shocked at the topics that they talked about around the dinner table. And um, I'm still maybe even a little traumatized with my <laughs> father-in-law having the sex talk with me and my future brother-in-law. Never had that conversation with any of my parents. Okay, <laughs> um, But you know what? Dad um, obviously means well and was, was trying to counsel me and have that open communication um, that I just was not used to. But I've learned a lot over the past few years and um, it's been good for our marriage too. Uh, by God's grace, we've been able to work through that. And now when we have conflicts, we have disagreements. Um, wow, it's it's way better and way faster to get through that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a great um, great area of use for open communication. And another way is, is in parenting that I'm still learning and trying to practice with my kids, trying to be intentional with that, uh, which is, is still difficult for me. But uh, one great area right now that, that I can share with you guys is, is being able to talk about tough topics like pornography mm -hmm. with, with my kids. You know, with my oldest kid, Corbin, um, he's now almost 11. And this is a topic, this is an issue that I've struggled with, this area of sin, um, even as a young kid for me, starting at age nine, being exposed to this and um, just the, the detriment it's caused in my life, you know, um, creeps into your marriage, everything, it's, it's very bad. Uh, so being able to talk openly with that, you know, with, with, with Corbin right now, um, I think it's huge. You know, I feel like I'm making good progress as a father and being able to allow him to see I share my experiences, you know, obviously in a in an age appropriate and a detail appropriate manner, but being able to share openly with him and, and help him process of why why is that bad? Why is it sinful? Mm -hmm. Um 
what could be the consequences, you know, if you get mixed up in something like pornography. Um, being able to share that with him now and help him guard that and uh, also be able to process the world better. Um, you know, seeing that his daddy has struggled with that too. Hopefully mm -hmm. that's helpful and will help guard him from that. Um, that's one one great area I think open communication can really, um, really, you know, help penetrate our family and make it stronger and better. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's been great for our marriage and our, our parenting. I'm still learning and growing and... Uh, by God's grace, it'll only get better. So hopefully this blesses you guys, our, our sharing, and um, we pray that you too can, can practice open communication and uh, may it be a blessing to you all. All right, thank you. Praise God for open communication. It opens the heart and it brings you closer to each other. Open communication involves the five A's of listening. Availability. Always be available. Don't give a busy signal. Attention. Give full attention. Let them know they are not a burden. Show interest. Open communication means what? You have the right attitude. You love them. You are interested. And ask questions. You want to really find out what they are really saying. So you ask questions, you paraphrase it. And lastly, you must realize all topics are open. Don't say these topics cannot be discussed because just like what my daughters shared, all topics. Why? That's how open communication is all about. I've asked my wife to share her story, when it comes to open communication, let's welcome my wife. As Peter shared, our children should feel safe to talk to us about anything. When our daughter was in college, she got into a group that enjoyed partying, like drinking. She had never done that before. One night she came home and she said to us around the dinner table, Mom, Dad, I enjoy drinking. The reality is that sometimes your children will say things that will be shocking to you. At first I wanted to react, but then I remembered. I took a deep breath. I said, really, honey, so why do you say that? So we let her express her opinion. And then after talking for a while, I said, can I share my own story? that I grew up in a military family and I saw many people who started drinking socially and it deteriorated into alcoholism. So I said, once you open this door, it might be hard to close. Then we just really prayed for her and kept praying for her. We didn't really um, scold her about it. We just tried to process it. One night she came home from San Miguel, which was the go-to place at that time for the kids. And she threw herself on the bed. And she said, I think I'm going to die from secondary smoke. In my mind, that's progress. And then uh, after that, a few weeks later, she came home and she said, you know, mom and dad, I've been thinking about this. I'm a follower of Jesus, but my lifestyle does not reflect that. I'm having no spiritual impact on the lives of my friends by my behavior. So I've decided to live differently, to follow Jesus and honor him. Then she turned to both of us and she said, thank you for walking alongside of me in my journey. That's a picture of open communication. It's more of a coach approach where we help them process, think through by asking questions and be there to cheer them on. So God bless you. As we close, let me share with you a few verses to encourage you about the importance of open communication. After listening, how do you respond? And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, Speaking the truth in love, we are to grow in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. Do you notice something about this verse? We are to balance speaking the truth in love. Many times we just speak the truth, but it's very painful. It hurts. So you balance it, love. Many times people focus on love, but they're afraid to share the truth. Open communication is to be able to share something in truth 
and love. What is the overarching purpose? It says here, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. So when I share something with my children, with my disciples, my heart's objective is to help them become more and more like Christ. You see, many times we correct family members out of selfish reasons. We want to change them for our convenience. What I've learned is this. I share with them truth out of love so that they become more and more Christ-like. Not for my selfish reason, but to bring them closer to the Lord. And if you, if you begin to learn how to respond in love and truth, you will be able to apply this amazing principle in Proverbs 15. A gentle answer turns away wrath. A harsh word stirs up anger. Do you notice? Communication is learning how to respond gently in love. If you overreact, if you get angry, you know what's going to happen? Look at verse 2. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge acceptable. You will not accomplish your purpose because it won't be received well. But if you learn to communicate in love, gentle, you become effective. Remember, listen to understand before you speak to be understood. As a discipler, as parents, may I remind all of us that we represent our Lord. We do not want to be an obstacle in the relationship with God. We want to be an instrument and catalyst for God's Spirit to impact and transform the lives of our disciples, the lives of our children for His glory. Open communication is the key. Open communication opens the heart because they know they are understood, they know they are loved, and God's Spirit and God's Word are able to do its mighty work. May this be a blessing to all of us.